They are always encouraging conversation, participation, dialectic, and in all things the free reign to bounce ideas off of one another and examine them from many different perspectives. That's a long way of saying they want to converse about things. Um, this makes them great proponents of intellectual free speech and discussion. ENTPs want to open everything to possible revision and future discovery. Any unexamined dogma or certainty is absolutely inimical to them. They are analytic inquirers and can sometimes confuse or offend people when they overturn conventionally sacred rocks in a natural effort to be honest and incisive inquirers. And their facade for keeping people calm doesn't always quite work. So, um, the, but they are very clear and crystallized in their presentation. They're very controlled and dispassionate in their delivery of jokes or stories. There's almost a sort of jovial stoicism that somehow enjoys life without ever seeming terribly attached to it. Uh, that's an odd way to put it, but... Like the INFJ, there is often a struggle and even hollowness in which they feel unable to connect with people emotionally, which is a terrible irony because they greatly value genuine emotional intimacy and the unity that comes from shared sentiments. They're too good at secretly detaching themselves emotionally from situations without coming off as cold, which means that no one actually realizes that they are in fact lonely and not emotionally attached. The image I'd like to use here is of a Socratic commentator, the brilliant but somewhat odd fellow who is exceptionally mild-mannered and unassuming as they try to engage people in debates about their daily life, causing them to put previously cherished beliefs or notions under the knife of scrutiny, and this very often gets them labeled as heretics or blasphemers or otherwise as um, annoyingly irreverent whether or not they intend to be. Now to begin, uh, extroverted intuition, their dominant function, works in conjunction with their inferior function, introverted sensation, in accordance with the idea of, of function axes. I have so far described this as a dynamic between a variety of different perspectives on things being composited into a concrete vision of reality. Hence, the ISTJ and ISFJ, both dominated by introverted sensation are also dominated by the concretized truth or reality of things that they've made, which explains the sense of grounding, tradition, and prudence that they so often express. They say, this is how things are, so this is how I'll respond. I'm not going to get thrown off by a single moment, no matter how flashy it is. I say this because in direct contrast, the ENTP and the ENFP um, which are dominated by extroverted intuition, are also dominated by the side that searches for more and more perspectives to formulate that vision in the first place, making them particularly interested in momentary flashes that might promise more information and possibilities and perspectives. So while the SI type suffers from a peculiar stubbornness and a tendency to mistrust any new ideas and things because they're holding on to the truth, uh, the NE type suffers from a lack of stability or commitment in their beliefs to begin with because they're always searching for the information that would lead to concretizing that truth. I would like to discuss and apply a newer look at NESI um, along with the one I just presented which was proposed to me originally by Ryan Smith of Celebrity Types who in turn took the idea from Matt Tagg. Um, Tagg describes uh, NESI as streamy, quote, as opposed to the SENI axis, which is spiky. So I want to describe this because I find it's very useful for better understanding the ENTP. The idea here is that the SENI axis tends to zoom in on what's going on right now and to expound on that, making it more important in the moment than any other related events in the past or future, hence why it is, quote, spiky. This isn't in itself a new idea, of course. Celebrity types offered a version of it in their first article on function axes when they stated, quote, the person will stress one point of view, an I, which is indeed frequently the viewpoint that generates the greatest yield here and now, SE. I've elaborated on this idea myself by saying that SE represents the breadth of disparate data points that NI proposes a line of best fit for, saying what it all means and where it's going. In a discussion I had with John Barnes, he also pointed out to me that this view of SENI means the type will think in terms of what data have you given me right now to work off of and what conclusions can be drawn from that data. SE looks at what is there and then NI takes over. John Barnes further pointed out in our discussion 
that opposed to this, NESI is always expanding its initial data set from which its conclusions are drawn. By the way, this is probably more of my interpretation of what John Barnes was saying, so you can, you can ask him to make sure that I'm quoting him right. I tend to, to run away with theories very much like I'm describing here. But anyway, um, as I understood it, he was talking about NESI is always expanding its initial data set from which its conclusions are drawn. And he does ask the data questions. You could say it that way anyway, which is why it's always looking for new perspectives. NE is never satisfied. Indeed, doesn't really even see the richness directly in front of it, but always finds the richness it's looking for obtainable through creative associations from that data. It is SI which, continuing the phraseology, does not ask the conclusion questions, but takes it directly and concretely as the vision of the world. As such, NESI is more, quote, streamy because it's always expanding its vision from the initial data to other data sets, forming connections with them, and seeking to see things in terms of a larger, more and more comprehensive general perspective. This is something celebrity types also uh, originally put it in their article, quote, there is an unconscious striving to contribute one's observations to building a system which is valid not just in the here and now, which is perceived to be true in general." End quote. This can create a tension between NI and NE users when the NE user keeps bringing in elements and new data that for the NI type changes the whole game. Meanwhile, the NI type keeps delving into things instead of stepping back further and further to get everything straight first. Thus, the ENTP is continually deferring or putting off final conclusions, which is why they have an intriguing reliance on doubt. This leads us back to celebrity types idea, once again, that NE goes from the one to the many, while NI goes from the many to the one. Um, so in summary then, while SENI forms creative conclusions from momentary sets of data, in other words, it's sort of inspired by more singular experiences, NESI, which is what the ENTP expresses, it forms general, eternal, or at least intended to be internal conclusions from a variety of creative connections and perspectives between data. In other words, it solidifies its position from many different investigations. The ENTP and the ISTJ share a certain caution, which comes off as stubbornness or narrow-mindedness in the ISTJ, and interestingly, as the opposite in the ENTP, as an unwillingness to commit because of their open-mindedness. The ENTP is a natural skeptic, holding off solidified conclusions because of how much focus they put into the investigation and exploration process. There's just too much out there. They don't want to miss a better idea by anchoring to some idea they've only found right now. This is rather different from the INFJ, for instance, who is more likely to commit themselves enthusiastically to a conception only to suck it dry over time, add its rind to the pile, kind of like I'm doing right now. <laughs> In any case, it is precisely this view of NE that defines so much of the ENTP personality. The unexamined life is not worth living, said Socrates, and this is very often the ENTP motto, as I've seen it. And it is also what tends to get them into trouble, by the way, because it dictates that they trouble other people about their unexamined lives, whether intentionally or not because the ENTP is dominated by NE striving to build a generally true system, they become dominantly investigative and inquisitive. They are always examining, looking, and further contributing to an expanding concrete vision of reality, and any attempt to limit that search is to them paramount to voluntary blindness. You are putting blinders on, you're choosing not to see. They are particularly sensitive to having blinders put on them because they're sensitive to the possibility of there being more views out there that could contribute to understanding something. As I'll discuss this more in the FE section of the video, this is also why many ENTPs will tackle questions using more questions or be particularly concerned or interested in what other people think about a topic because they want to encourage a dialectic and get more information. So. The FETI axis is what I like to describe as the uh, translating axis. It is concerned with discovering the pure, abstract principles behind the multitude of sentimentally governed appearances. So the ENTP does not understand why one should value individual sentiments above reason. 
what one person happens to like or dislike at any particular point in time does not seem important or having anything to do with the bare truth. Even what they themselves are feeling at a particular moment is entirely accidental and should be ruled over by reason. Personal sentiments must be translated into intelligible principles in order for the ENTP to understand them. This dispassionate attitude combines with NE to produce not just an eternal investigator, but an exceptionally reasonable, shrewd, and critical one. Thus, while their tertiary FE can provide pleasant presentation and a concern with human unity, it in no way imitates the sentimental concerns of a dominant FI user like an INFP. And so the um, ENTP can become particularly frustrated when people seek to justify their reasoning through the intensity of their passions alone, which is a tendency of, of FI at times. This can make the ENTP appear not just annoyingly investigative and irreverent, but even downright cold-blooded. You don't, I, I don't know if people would agree that they see that as much, but I think that can come across sometimes with their incisive suggestions or inquiries that have no real regard for a person's personal feelings <laughs> as much, um, especially in the case of F.I. For instance, just because you personally know a homeless person and they were the best person ever and you realize their immense pain and suffering and you connected with them and you feel this in your heart and soul, uh, none of that is a rational justification, in, in other words, a TI justification in this case, for any kind of actual political action. But it is at the most a sentimental impetus to seek justification and come up with political action, but it's not a justification in itself as far as the ENTP is concerned. <laughs> I am not saying that all ENTPs will reason so dryly and tactlessly about touchy matters or that they'll even have that matter as a thing, but I am suggesting, this is what I'm trying to get at, that many ENTPs run into some version of the scenario and will get themselves into some kind of trouble for questioning the sacred and the unquestionable. Often, all the ENTP wants to open up a discussion about a thing so that many viewpoints can be proposed, analyzed logically, accepted, or thrown out, and overall, we can better justify the thing's sacredness and have a clearer idea of why we do the things that we do. The ENTP, aided by extroverted feeling, FE, often has an ability to express, express themselves very clearly and understandably. They simplify, unify, and present in well-dressed packages their ideas and concerns and can bring down to earth the most super-earthly concepts, something that has been said about a number of, or a couple of ENTPs anyway. Of course, the gift of explanation is not limited to ENTPs, but it often manifests in their case in a peculiarly clear and down-to-earth way. Often they will clearly divide and subdivide their questions or ideas into concise main points which can be elaborated on. I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I keep on seeing that. So if you're an ENTP and you do that, then yes, you know, cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the clarity I just described is not wholly the result of introverted thinking, however but is just as much the result of unrepressed extroverted feeling, because the two work together in the ENTP to make them solid presenters of information, able to pick apart a topic and then package it in a way that it can get it across to other people in a pleasing way. In general, the ENTP, no matter how reserved or brooding they in particular may be, generally is able to present themselves in a very nice and pleasant way, there is no need to necessarily smile. They will appear very put together in their thoughts and for this reason can make excellent and stimulating conversationalists or writers. That's a potential I definitely see there. However, this is mostly contingent on a much more fundamental effect of extroverted feeling, which is a sense and desire for sentimental unity. FETI as a whole axis is naturally unifying. It views the world in terms of abstract structures, clothed in more or less objective feeling tones that can be observed and recognized by all people. By all people. Opposed to this is TEFI, present in the ENFP, which views the world as personal expressions of subjective feelings and feeling tones unique to the individual, which are then bounded by observable and recognizable laws out in the world, which obviously does not recognize feeling tones in any way as objective, except insofar as they're 
translated into raw laws and theories. In any case, the ENTP has this sense of unity and is very often seeking for that sense of community only possible through unanimity on feeling tones and values. They are prone to the assumption, whether they admit it or not, that humankind basically desires the same thing at bottom. Uh, desires the same thing, another idea of celebrity types um, brought out, or at the very least that they should desire the same thing. For instance, David Hume's notion of sympathy. They can understand someone going against cold hard reason for the sake of maintaining an atmosphere to, to get things done, and they can understand someone breaking a needless atmosphere for the sake of good reasoning, but what they don't get and is often particularly irksome to them and INTPs is when an FI type, it's, it's always an FI type, both breaks a feeling atmosphere and fails to provide or answer too hard reasons for doing so. This is seen as just plain and simple irrationality and a lack of self-control. The conflict between individuality and the state is intelligible to them only in terms of a primarily customary exterior of rules and regulations being reformed by a more reasonable abstract rule realized by the individual, that a person could be justified in fighting against the state by the intensity of their passion alone is just dumb to them, anyway. Uh, passions are entirely contingent and must be subservient to reasons. This leads into another very important aspect of ENTPs that is often emphasized as a love of debate. What this is at bottom, I think, is a desire for open discourse related to extroverted feeling. They want more defensible perspectives, and E, offered by all people extroverted feeling. In this way, they are very inclusive, which is something celebrity types has pointed out in their series on function axes. This is why they question people and get their opinions, why they want to encourage rational debate and correspondence and discussion so that they can get more and more and more perspectives with the added benefit of more and more emotional interaction with people. They want to encourage the conversation. And yet, in my opening points, I mentioned how the ENTP, despite extroverted feeling, is often lonely or emotionally isolated or feels that way. The reason for this can be summed up by Robert Downey Jr. in his interview with Jimmy Fallon, who asked Downey Jr whether as an actor he was in touch with his emotions, to which Downey replied somewhat evasively, um, I mean I'd say I'm a, an emotional chameleon. In other words, the answer is actually no, I'm not in touch with my feelings because I just dismiss them and deal with things rationally and then express myself in an emotionally purposive way for other people. Um, the ENTP especially can feel as though they are cut off from most people, just putting on a facade to help them feel better, but never being able to really commune emotionally with people in the way that they deep down want to. They succeed in encouraging rational discourse with people, but ironically, it can feel hard for them at times to actually connect in more than a rational way with someone. As Chuck Palahniuk... Gosh darn it. <laughs> Chuck Palanir, Palanir, P A L. Why do they have to have all these weird names? Chuck Palnikschmuck, Palashmuck, Palestine. Wait, as the guy who, as the man who wrote Fight Club said, <laughs> as the man who wrote that book, Fight Club, said. All my books are about a lonely person looking for some way to connect with other people. Like in Fight Club by beating each other to a pulp. The main point I would like to make about introverted sensation was already made well by John Barnes in his own video on INTPs and ENTPs. Namely that the inferior SI in the ENTP represents their repression of codifying any set truth from their multitude of perspectives. Barnes points out that the INTP's tertiary SI is the primary reason they are considered system builders, while ISTPs are not. I think this is brilliant, by the way. Uh, props to him. Because it re SI represents the concretization of NE viewpoints into a subjectively held vision of reality. It is the willingness or even the will to settle, to become sedimentary, and to turn to hard rock. 
Whereas in the ISTP, it's totally different. It's with the SE and I axis. You don't have this uh, sense of concretizing this truth. You have this sense of conjecture. Anyway, um, it is this will, the INTP's SI will to, to, to settle down and form systems, which the ENTP fights against with all the fervor of their extroverted intuition. This is why the ENTP often does not have a system, but rather just a multitude of observations and notions they've, they've made, which are you know, tied together generally in a sense. This reappears in the work of a lot of ENTP thinkers, they, the desire to keep things up in the air. There's a contentedness with uncertainty and doubt that you see a lot over and over again with ENTPs. Because the moment that the rock becomes hard in the sediment, uh, then the ENTP can't move anymore, and then everything that makes the ENTP an ENTP is gone. So for the ENTP to be an ENTP, it's more likely to embrace a philosophy that leaves things, quote, up in the air and unsettled. Uh, John Barnes, in his video, mentioned the anti-Einsteinian theories of Wolfgang Pauli, um, and so I'd add to that uh, uh, the quantum uncertainty theories of Werner Heisenberg um, and the skepticism of David Hume and the falsificationism of Karl Popper. Thank you so much for watching this video, for, for listening in. I know it's taken me a long time to make it. I hope it was worth the wait. Thank you so much for your patience. I greatly appreciate it. You have no idea. I hope this was useful to you, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.